Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. What's going on everybody? Fetter here from 3D Print SOS. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to be starting a series on the Aquila slash Ender 3. Some of you guys have seen me extend this particular machine to 400 by 400 with the Ender Extender Kit, and we have some more pieces by them. And definitely check out the video down in the description below. If you guys are interested in extending your Ender 3 or Aquila, they make awesome kits, and this thing has been awesome for a very long time now. But essentially what I wanna do here is make an ultimate Aquila. So we can compare it to stock one and some other machines that are somewhat similar. My favorite part is that the Aquila and Ender 3, you can keep completely stock. You can do some maintenance and calibrate it and it will print perfectly. Or if you're the DIY type of guy like me, you like designing some things and tweaking some things and modifying things, it lends itself really, really well to modifications, which is what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna have a poll following this video where you guys can go and kind of steer this project into a direction that you guys are interested in. But I wanna start with electronics. I have actually been designing a whole bunch of different parts for this printer to help me get to the next level. And what I did was I came up with a way to have a chassis brace that gives us an opportunity to show off the electronics. And the reason why I say this is because when we get a motherboard or things like the Raspberry Pi, they're usually hidden underneath the printer in a casing away where no one else can see them. I wanna flip that. I wanna make the electronics box out in the front, clear top, LEDs inside, showcase this thing. But most PCBs aren't very attractive. That's where Big Tree Tech kind of flips the script. This particular board is the SKR Mini E3 V3. And in my opinion, this is one of the best looking boards out there. I love the heat sink idea. I love that this is moving into more of the uh, PC space. Uh, where it looks like an actual motherboard uh, to a PC. And I kind of want to treat it that way. I want the wiring not to be a giant mess. I want it to just look really nice and I want to showcase this thing. The reason why is because this tiny thing, even with the affordable price, packs a giant punch with features. Let me go over some of them. The first thing is that it has silent fans. The fans are broken out, one, two, and three, and whenever the, the machine is on, the fans will not be on. They'll only turn on when uh, you're putting heat through the machine, such as printing. And then when it's done printing and it cools down, the fans will turn off. Awesome little feature that should be on every machine out there just to reduce the noise of idling machines. Some of the other cool stuff is, for example, if you aren't using a TFT screen, which by the way, we also have from uh, Big Tree Tech, we have the TFT35 that we're gonna be messing with, awesome little touch screen. If you're not using a TFT screen, you can power and communicate with a Raspberry Pi Zero 2 uh, directly from this board, which means you can do things like Clipper or Octoprint with Marlin right here, right next to it, without doing any kind of external wiring, which is really, really nice. If you are using a screen, you can also use its onboard 5 volt power to run that little Raspberry Pi. And then you'll just have to use one cable to the USB. So a huge benefit right there, eliminating a whole bunch of wiring. You can also uh, hook up LEDs and then communicate uh, with the LEDs right from the screen. There's definitely a ton of features on here. For example, Dual Z, which we have a kit by Ender Extender. Uh, for this machine that will uh, make this a dual Z machine. So lots of things packed on this little board and it's actually priced really similarly to stock boards from Creality or VoxLab. A great option if you're looking to go in this custom direction. So this board has definitely inspired this entire project. So that's where we're gonna start. 
Also worth mentioning, Big Tree Tech did send me this for free. However, no money is exchanged and I'm not supposed to say anything specific. This is my honest opinion on it and I can't wait to check this out and tell you everything that's good about it. And if I find anything bad about it, you guys will be the first to know. The other part of this is making it better with a different hot end. First, we have the uh, Spider by Creality. And this is a really cool hot end because it gives you a lot of really high end features for another low price. The other hot ends that I have to choose from is from Fetus. Now these particular hot ends that I have here are the Dragonfly and these are black and not blue because these were a collaboration they did with Zodiac 3D which make really, really nice nozzles. However, the Fetus versions of the Dragonfly are available on Amazon and I'll have links for them down below. They're really nice, high-end, high-end feeling, high-end looking, high-end performing hot ends. So definitely want to have an option for those and I have both the uh, V6 style mount and the Creality style mount. So it's going to come down uh, with what type of mount I want to install here. And I have an idea right now for showcasing one of my friends, uh, Mode. Thank you very much for that, uh, for the files for that. And it's going to be super cool on this machine. I can't wait to get to the hot end on here. We also have a, a CR Touch installed on this. If you guys are interested in the video for that, link down below. Same with uh, running Octoprint on the machine. That's already done on this one. Um, but if you guys are interested in that, definitely check out a link below. We also have the Fetter extruder, which lets us have an adjustable extruder that eliminates the PTFE fitting that's on top of here and lets us print soft materials like TPU. Another link in the description below. Uh, we're going to remove the springs on the bed and we're going to use a silicone mount for the bed. We're also going to uh, install insulation on the bottom of the bed because this extender uh, uses um, the stock uh, Aquila heat pad. So insulating it is definitely going to improve performance big time. You see some uh, uh, some taps and, and uh, drill bits over here because essentially I'm going to take this 500 millimeter 20 by 20 and I'm going to attach it to the bottom basically linking the left side, the right side and the center of the machine together. And the way we're going to do that is by drilling and tapping into the extrusions we have this special mount I designed that will slide into this 4040 extrusion that holds the bed, eliminating this little foot and essentially giving us this nice stout chassis. Here's actually a 3D rendering of the thing. I'm still designing the electronics box, but here you can have a sneak peek of what this thing is going to look like. And one of my favorite features uh, so far is going to be these little feet uh, where you can see by design they slide right into the extrusion. Here, listen to that, it's a really satisfying sound. Ah, so nice. And they mount to the 40, uh, 40, 40 extrusions on the front, tying everything together and making everything nice and sturdy. And I have a set of these for the front and back that should mount right up to the whole thing. So as you can see, there's a lot to go over and a lot I need some help with from you guys. Go ahead and check out that poll and let me know which one you're more interested in so I know which direction to go. I think for episode two, we're actually going to print uh, the electronics box that I designed. We're going to start stripping this thing apart and putting in uh, all the brains of this sy uh, system uh, thanks to Big Tree Tech. And uh, we're going to see where this thing goes based on what you guys want to see next. The way I want to do this is even though this is the extended version of this uh, printer, I want to make sure that most if not all of these things outside of the chassis itself uh, can uh, be replicated on a standard machine. So that if you guys are interested in these modifications or these upgrades, you can do it at home following along one of these videos. That's how, that's how kind of I want to do, uh, that's how I want to handle this series. So make sure you guys let me know in the comments and in that poll exactly what you're interested in. That way when we have this ultimate Aquila built together, we'll be able to put it up against similar machines and the stock Aquila and Ender 3 and see if any of it was even worth it. So I think that's going to be lots of fun. But let's take a second to talk about Skillshare. I've been taking some classes by Vladimir Mariano on Fusion 360 and they've been a huge help for me learning how to use that software because it is pretty complex. And one of the best things that Skillshare does is the videos are all right around an hour and they're broken up into these smaller videos that are kind of like bite-sized pieces. So I can do one during a lunch break at work, 
I can do one walking around the house. I can do one on my phone really quickly. And there's all these different topics, anything from gardening to vehicle maintenance. So go ahead and check out Skillshare for a free month using the link in the description below. And you're not obligated to sign up. You can just check it out for that month, see what it's all about, learn a couple things, and then decide whether you like it or not. And that's exactly what I did. So thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right, guys, so we have a lot to do, a lot to check out. I'm going to continue designing the electronics box. So the next time you see this series, we're going to be getting our hands dirty and there's going to be significantly less talking. And I think that's all for me. So let me know what you guys are interested in. And as always, I'll see you down in the comments later.